everyone. Welcome back to the Do Marketing Differently podcast presented by Go Rogue X. My name is Brian Fitton, and this is the podcast dedicated to those who are wanting to do marketing differently, serve first, and stand out from the crowd. That's you. You're in the right spots. Make sure you like and subscribe this uh, to this video and to this podcast because we try to bring you tips and tricks and all kinds of resources every single week. So make sure that you are in the know first. So we try to do it quickly and up to date and like really good stuff, right? <laughs> Right, really Lauren? good stuff. <laughs> really good stuff. My co-host, Lauren Lewis, she's hey. laughing at me. It was very good. That was a great intro. You were was very it? passionate. I was. Hey, <laughs> the seven brew is kicking to- in. Totally subscribe. <laughs> we're falling apart at the beginning of this episode already. But seven brew is kicking in for me, so that's why I'm so yeah. passionate. So I've got a double shot. Caffeine. There. Caffeine. <laughs> Needed it. Needed it. Hey, I'm excited because this episode, we're going to be talking about ways to measure success in your social media uh, campaigns, your strategies, all that stuff. And so we've got some ideas and stuff for you, uh, tips and tricks, like I said before, because we try to do that every single week. We do. We're just going down a path. I'm so sorry. Everyone listening, if you're still hanging with us, it's going to get better. I promise. (laughs) All right. But before we jump into our awesome topic, what do we like to do, Lauren? We like to have a little fun here, Brian. We do. <laughs> if we're not already having fun. <laughs> we like to talk about what we are obsessed with this week. So, Brian, what yes. are you obsessed with this week? So, uh, this last week, I was actually able to do a virtual presentation through One Million Cups. Awesome. Bill. Yeah. So, one, mi- one Million Cups, say that five times fast while having seven brew. One Million Cups is an organization uh, founded by the Kauffman Foundation, mm-hmm. I believe. And uh, so, anyway, they try to foster uh, you know entrepreneurship and stuff like that in the community to where everyone will sh- share 1 million cups of coffee listening to a presentation which is really cool it is really and cool so uh, obviously with this you know situation where we're in quarantine we weren't able to do it you know in person and so we do a lot of live streaming and obviously teach on that kind of stuff and so I was able to do a virtual presentation this week and used a new software called streamyard which is super awesome. I'm always into new software and technology, and Lauren is not, and so I don't get to geek out with her. So if you want to geek out over software, please give me a call because I would love to uh, talk about it. So StreamYard was great. It was priced appropriately, but then also multi-streaming. You can do a lot of stuff with it, and so um, it was really cool. So I think we're going to use it from here on out. We've used other you know, yep. live streaming software like Ecamm Live and Be Live, and all have their own great things about them. But StreamYard kind of pulled in what you needed in a non fancy way. It just works. And so I was very impressed with it. So big shout out to the guys at StreamYard. Yeah. I thought it was really cool. Yeah. All right. So what this about you? week. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> What about you, Lauren? <laughs> I, am, I, am, I actually um, was using InStories. Um, you use that app? InStories? No, I've never used that. What? Wait a second. I have yeah. a long time ago. Yeah. It is a great one. It is a really great one. In social media marketing world. Shout out to uh, Jeff C. I think is how you spell his name. Jeff C. Yeah, Jeff C. He's got an awesome beard. He works with Social Media Examiner. Oh, and cool. He talked about it in stories. It's one of his favorites too. So. Yeah. So I was looking for some just really minimalistic animations for some stories for um, an account we work on, and uh, I used it this Sunday, and it was a lot of fun. There's like really simple swipe animations for these stories, and um, I just loved that it it kept me pretty focused. Um, I think a lot of these apps, it's really easy to go kind of bananas Mm -hmm. with um, all the different templates and everything, but they had a lot of minimalistic templates that really helped me kind of stay on brand and everything. And I would highly recommend it. It was a, it was a really good app. Nice. Yeah. Let me get back into that. I know. It's a good one. (laughs) So shout out to uh, in stories. Mm -hmm. We'll uh, we'll make sure to tag them in the episode as well. And all the links and resources, if you guys want to see these things, uh, StreamYard, which you should take advantage of. And then also in stories, we'll put them on our blog. So that way you guys can get all of that information there. But let's jump in to our topic today, four ways you should measure social media success. So do you have a quote for us today? I do. Yes. So I found this on Hootsuite and I thought it was pretty good because it kind of paints um, a pretty common interaction that we see in the realm of marketing. So if your boss asks, how well are we doing on social media? Do you respond with words or numbers? Because data trumps opinion every time. I'm not talking about the number of new fans, followers, likes, or shares. I'm talking about how those numbers show if you're achieving your business goals. Is what you're doing on social useful? Is it contributing to more business? That's what your boss wants to hear from you. Wow, that's great. Yes. Yeah, that is, uh, that's definitely one of those that anybody can have opinions about where you're going. 
uh, especially with the social media side. Mm-hmm. And we, I have lots of opinions yes, on how do. to engage <laughs> <laughs> social media, how to measure that. But data obviously always trumps mm-hmm. everything. And so um, I think he pulled out a good quote too. It's like your goals. So it's not always like shaming if you don't have a ton of likes or mm-hmm. comments or whatever, because if your goal is not that, yep. and we can, we're going to talk about that later, um, it obviously makes a big difference on what your goal is and where how, how far you are from achieving that. So Yeah, absolutely. And so I think when you pull a lot of reports for social media analytics, I mean, it is pretty overwhelming. Most companies, I feel like they give you so much sheer amount of data that Mm -hmm. it's very difficult to kind of decipher through what is actually important. And like you just said, well, first place you need to start with what actually are your goals? Because if you're just looking at a data sheet, it's not going to really inform you of anything for the most part. Um, So the first way that we say you should measure your social media success is through high engagement levels. And you'll see this like word a lot. Um, And I think a lot of people say, well, people have engaged by liking my things. I'm good. Mm but it encompasses a lot more. Yeah, yeah. So kind of walk us through what does a high engagement level actually look like? Um, well, I mean, really it's, for me, it's a lot of the comments, yep. the likes, shares, retweets, that type of thing too. But um, high engagement, I mean, our customers contacting you is that engaging because we've, tw- we've talked about, I don't know if we will go down this path too, but um, you know, that sales funnel, a lot of times you, people don't, either separate sales and marketing, you know, differently, but you really need to be able to say, Hey, they may not have liked a post. They may not have, you know, commented on a post or whatever, but they're still all of a sudden our, our intake of inbound marketing is going up. People are emailing us or contacting us, that type of thing. So that's a way to really kind of be able to see whether or not those high engagement, you know, if what you're doing is actually being effective. Yeah. Um, so when you're looking on, particularly if you were to pull like a report, Mm -hmm. Um, one thing to really see is it's not just like likes, um, really you should be looking at more for shares and comments are a lot more powerful than just a simple like. Um, but also you can look at your account mentions and that's something that's really interesting and something to think about. It's not just if you mention them, they mention you back. That that's great, but that's just more just reciprocal sharing. Mm -hmm. Um, it's more, are people using your brand in everyday life? And so, um, if they're just talking about you in their general day, then they're clearly have you on their mind. And I think it's a really good recognition that your engagement with rate is actually pretty high and you have a healthy audience engagement. Absolutely. Yeah. Can we use our example of TC screen printing? Yeah. So one of the things that we did is we got uh, some cool new face mask yeah. coverings to uh, make sure that we're social distancing and keeping everybody healthy. And so uh, we had some printed that had our logo on it and we obviously took a picture of it and shared that with them and and tagged them. And so that was a good example of like TC was on our mind Mm -hmm. because we involve, we engage with them quite a bit. I see their posts, we see their videos, their Arkansas shirt club. They do a lot of stuff. And so they're doing a good job. I may not be liking every post that they Mm -hmm. have. I may not be commenting on everything, but I see them in my feed. And so that is one of those. It's like, Hey, they're front of mind for us. And so we want to, we wanted to mention that was nothing from them that they said, Hey, when you get these, make sure you tag us, make sure you right. take a picture, make sure, you know, they didn't do anything like that, but they were front of mind for us because we liked their product and um, obviously wanted to stay engaged with them. So their their social media efforts are working because we knew that if we took a photo that they would be there to respond or appreciate it because they're that active on social media all the time. So, yeah, yeah that's a great example. Um, so, yeah, when we, the first measure that we really look at is the engagement level, and it's a combination of all those things that we've just talked about, not just one element, because if you look at one element, you're missing a lot of the big picture. Um, and we talk a lot about it's very easy to get caught up in vanity metrics um, where you're just all about the likes, and that's really a kind of a pit to fall into because it really doesn't mean a ton. Mm-hmm. And so this is definitely the first one to look at. The second one is a high conversion rate. Mm. So if we're talking high conversion rate for someone who may not be particularly, maybe they're newer to the marketing world or sales world. What does that mean? Conversion rate. Uh, So it goes back to, honestly, it, what is your goal in this too? So um, if you're trying to drive them into a, a sales funnel, like conversion, any type of conversion would be, they clicked the link, they visited the website, they signed up and got your you know lead magnet or whatever it is, your email um, download. So that is, that is a conversion, right? Um, or 
or we talk about video marketing in general, like did they did they go through, you know, 50 percent of or did they watch all of the video and at the end take an action? So it's some type of action like share or not even that it's, you know, hey, share this video. That would be I would assume is a conversion because obviously it's some way to Mm -hmm. actually they took action in order um, rather than just consuming your content. They actually did something about it. Yeah. So, I mean, like really for me, let me dumb it down of like, (laughs) can you get your followers to take action when you ask them to? Yeah. Yeah. Um, And so I have a quote from Hootsuite again, they were just on fire. How many visitors take action, take the action you ask them to? Here's the ideal sequence. You post user clicks on your call to action link. User sees a landing page. They complete an intended action on that page. Like subscribe to your newsletter, download your guide, schedule, time to talk, whatever. Because being social is more than just looking great. You've got a business to run and a boss to please. A high conversion rate shows you and your boss that your fans and followers care about what you have to say, show, and share. Absolutely. Yeah. So we got a... uh a message today or I got a message today from somebody who listens to the show yeah. who I don't engage with personally on social media a lot. And, uh, so it was one of those that, um, um, really was kind of cool to see what we were doing. So they were asking questions about something we had referenced in another episode, um, and had a question about it. And it was one of those things that like, I felt like that was a conversion rate because they did something about the content. They yeah. asked questions cause we're always saying, Hey, if you have questions, please reach out to us. We'd love to, uh, to That's chat fine. with you. Um, and so it was Brandon, by the way. I want to give a shout out to hey, Brandon, Brandon there. Thanks, Brandon. <laughs> um, but it was one of those things. It's like, yeah, that was an actual conversion because Brandon did something about the content that we were sharing and our right. social media engagement. So it made a difference. Right. Which was awesome. So when you're looking at your post and thinking about it, and if you're asking them, hey, share this post, and they're not doing that, it says that your audience isn't really engaged with you and you're not necessarily that, at least that piece. Yeah, I'm not going to yeah. say you as a, you're a total failure, but I'm saying that piece is not doing what it's intended to do. And so um, it might get all the likes, it might get all the comments, but if you ask them to share it and it still didn't work, you need to reevaluate your strategy. Absolutely. And I, we will can- we need to do another episode, by the way, on like shareable content, what yes. that looks like. Because if you're asking your audience to share something and it's not easily shareable or it's not something that's worthy of sharing, right. they're not going to convert. If you ask somebody to comment on a post and it's not something that's easily commentable, yep. is that a word? I mean, I guess. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it is one of those things that you make sure that that one call to action, and we always try to keep it at one thing that they're mm-hmm. supposed to do with that piece of content. Um Make sure that it is easy to do that. Take down all the barriers for them to be able to to convert, honestly. Yep. It's like, hey, sign up for our email list, but we're not going to include a link to that email list. We're not going to make it easy for you. Hey, go to our website, but it's on the fifth page down. You have to drop down. Like, no, 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 no. Just make it super easy. Make sure that they know how to get there. It's very clear. And uh, like I said, you take down all the barriers for that. But I'm excited about that. Let's put a note on that about we'll the, uh, the shareable, <laughs> shareable content because that's a big deal. Or that's snackable. something we're getting into. Snackable, shareable. Oh just, uh, I was trying to think of another S word. It's fine. <laughs> All right. All right. Okay. So we've talked about having a high engagement rate yep. shows that you are being successful as well as a high conversion rate. The third one would be traffic. And when I mean traffic, I'm not talking about beep beep traffic. I'm talking about um, your website traffic. All of a sudden you have a spike in website traffic and you're like, where did that come from? Mm-hmm. If it's coming back from your social media channels, that's a really good thing because they're wanting to know more about you. Yes. Not just even what you just posted about. They want to know more about you. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. There, we had a uh, one of our podcasts that we that we work with, the Adopted Mom, just interviewed Corey Robertson of the Duck Dynasty show and uh, Willie and Corey um, about adoption and all that stuff. And it was interesting because uh, Corey actually reshared some of the content mm-hmm. that that we had produced and then did a swipe up, and it was to the website. It was interesting to see the amount of traffic that went to the website to see more information about it, that people were actually interested in that. But that's a great call to action. It's like, hey, go to the website, see what's going on. Um, But then also, like, you're right. If you you have – here's a great way to tell if your content is working. If you're not linking your website in your post, and then all of a sudden your website traffic does increase (laughs) – Yes. which I don't think you should do. I think you should obviously include some type of call to action link. But um, that's a great way to show like, hey, 
we may not be getting the likes and comments and shares on our actual content, but our website traffic is up yes. and you can see where it's coming from. I mean, run those Google analytics to actually see where all that stuff is coming from because it'll show you Facebook or Instagram or mm -hmm. wherever else. Right. And so that is a great way. Again, data trumps opinion as a great way to say, Hey, we're not getting all of this, you know, people liking our stuff on Facebook, but obviously traffic is coming from Facebook. So what we're doing is working. Gold. Gold. <laughs> Gold right there. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, it, again, it's putting your business goals at the forefront of your mind. Are we accomplishing those particular goals? Is what's happening actually matter? Yeah. Because it's great if you have like 100 likes on this post and people are commenting on it, but then they don't buy your product. Well, clearly it's not working. Yeah. You yeah. just have a fancy graphic that people think is nice. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. I like that graphic. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So the most important one um, that we want to talk about is more leads and customers because we've talked about the fact that you can have all the likes in the world, but if you're not getting people to buy your product, you're not actually getting more customers. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't. And so the biggest indicator of social media success is actually you're getting more business. So walk us through that, Brian. Oh man. <laughs> it's uh, a big yeah. umbrella there. Yeah, for real. <laughs> uh, no. So, I mean, this is one of the biggest things that we talk about, especially in our business and with our clients, uh, because we are not a social media marketing company, right? We do video marketing, which encompasses a lot of things, but, and part of that is social media, yeah, right? Sure. Uh, because we're creating that content. But the biggest thing that we want to hear about is, are you getting more, you know, contact me forms. Are you getting the things that you're sending people to the landing pages? Is that getting more traffic? Um, is, you know, your sales team, are they busy receiving calls and emails about people, you know, wanting to, wanting to do business with you? And I think that that is, I mean, here's the deal at the end of the day, that's what matters, right? Mm -hmm. To a business is, are you driving that, that inbound, um, inbound traffic? And so a lot of that is through social media. A lot of that is through, like I said, staying front of mind, putting out a ton of content. So that way, every time they're scrolling, they're seeing your stuff and you're just giving value. You're giving value, not, Hey, 20% off today, 30% off tomorrow that, you know, buy one, get one, like none of that, like actually providing good value to somebody without asking them for anything. Because I guarantee you, you consistently show up in their feed they will naturally feel bad that they're not doing business with you, right? If right. they're looking for a plumber and you're consistently saying, hey, this is how you fix this. This is how you fix that. This is what you need to be looking out for. Hey, here are five tips on making sure to prepare your your home for the winter. Like all of those things. When I'm going looking for a plumber, I'm going to be like, this dude has been in my feed constantly yeah. and giving me value. He obviously knows what he's doing. I want to make sure uh, to give my business to that person. So a lot of times it, that is the ultimate measure of whether or not your social media is working. Right. Um, but then also like having your guests, your potential clients on a podcast or on mm -hmm. a live show or interviewing yeah. them um, about what they're doing or even people who have worked with you in the past, interviewing them about their experience with you as well. I mean, there's a lot of ways to to promote your services without asking people, like, please buy my thing. Please right. make sure you buy my thing. Like it is right. one of those things of making sure that that you are doing the right things up front, serving your audience first, because it will come back. I mean, it has. We've seen it time and time again mm -hmm. with our clients of that they always seem to to have that obviously coming back to them um, sometimes tenfold. So it's pretty cool. Sure. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So today we've kind of gone over four ways that you can measure social media success. So one was a high engagement rate that's encompassing a large amount of likes, comments, shares, mentions, all the things, um, not just one. And then two, a high conversion rate. So people are doing what you ask them to do. <laughs> Three, you're seeing an uptick in your website traffic. Beep, beep. Sorry. I need that. You did that. You were like, I was like, I can't let that. We need, we need like a button. Yes. We need it. We need a button. We've got plenty of buttons. We need to do this. Oh Sorry. My gosh. Okay. And then four, you're seeing more customers, more leads. Your sales team is getting more calls and more interest. Yep. It's awesome. Yeah. What business doesn't want all of those four things? Absolutely. So yeah. it's a great way to evaluate your social media. Um, and if you need help, in the, evaluating those business goals yeah. and what areas of social media you should be focusing on. We have a lot of awesome content that can help you with that, or we'd love to chat with you about that. True. Absolutely. And even kind of evaluate what you're currently doing. Um, just give us a call. We'd love to consult with you and, and take a look at that for you. And actually, again, you, you mentioned up front, 
taking a look at all the numbers and all the data and sometimes there's just too much and yeah. you don't really know you're like oh great hey our page likes are up or our instagram <laughs> followers are up sure what does that actually mean and is that actually a good way to measure success in your business so yeah that's good awesome hey this is great lauren that's some good quotes too thanks good. i tried yeah. so make sure you guys uh jump over to our blog at goroguex.com to make sure you get all of the information all the links all the resources that we talked about today and uh subscribe please if this is something that is shareable content to you and you see the value of it please make sure to share it with somebody or a business owner who could uh, benefit out of this and so yeah yeah until next week we'll see you guys later fire let's go all right let's do this if you could write a book what genre would you write it in mm, if i had the talent yeah to write a book that's the question <laughs> <laughs> i'm repeating i'm clarifying in my mind uh i would probably do some like thriller horror type that book. makes sense yeah I yeah know. Just, <laughs> yeah if i had that talent what about you probably something in like sci-fi Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I always enjoy that genre a lot. So, yeah. It's yeah. True. Or thriller. Yeah. I could see thriller. Okay. Be fun. Okay. Yeah. I don't know about the horror. So you're on the sci fi thriller. I'm on the thriller horror. Like, yeah. And <laughs> so we're in the same ballpark. What about you guys? You guys make sure to tell us yes. what your, your thoughts are on that. Yeah. All right. All Good right. question. Here's another one. Okay. The zombie apocalypse is coming. It are, it's here. Okay. Yeah, pretty much. Your family is ready in the car. Okay. <laughs> so they're safe in the car, ready to go. You have time to grab three items from your house with the zombies coming. What do you grab? Hard drive. Your hard drive? <laughs> Pictures, <Okay>. family photos. <laughs> it's it's there if it's not already in the cloud. Okay. Back, okay. Double backup. Fair. All right. Come on I haven't now. really thought about this question myself. Oh, <laughs> you're critiquing me or criticizing me on my answer. Uh, three things. So, uh, my gun. We're going out into the. <laughs> why am I? I didn't know you had a life. gun. Oh well, yeah. Okay. <laughs> anyway, goodness, I feel like I'm scared to answer. My bad. Now. Okay, I'm so sorry. I'm not. Gonna I'll, I'll get to my third. Why don't you tell us what yours are? I don't know. What yeah, <laughs> you see how hard it is. Exactly. Okay, so you have your hard drive and your gun. <laughs> yeah, and then I'll get back to you on my third one. Okay. Um. This is actually rapid pretty. fire. Come I know on. I'm Come trying. On. I'm trying. I try not to think about these too much. Okay. I would probably grab my laptop <laughs> now that I think about it. Okay. Of all the things that are saved on yeah. here. That's fair. I don't have a gun, so I would have to think of some kind of weapon. Yeah. Barbed wire bat or something that you have. A in the barbed wire bat. You know, Negan, <laughs> you know, all my walking dead fans out there. <laughs> um, maybe some garden shears. There you go. <laughs> I don't have a okay, barbed wire okay. bat. <laughs> Why are there three? The third one's like the most difficult. I know. I was trying to think about something that would be like more survival based, but yeah. then I'm like, would it be like a a tent's not going to help in a zombie apocalypse? <laughs> no, <laughs> it is not. Mm. I know. Like a portable grill. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this has gone downhill so fast. Uh yeah, I mean, you could, you almost like you need to like. I guess this is why it's rapid fire. Yeah, it's just completely open. Yeah, just what would you grab? I'm gonna make sure to grab a baseball cap. There you go. Yeah, you know, because yeah. I mean, I, I gotta be looking good when I die. Apparently, when zombies attack me. <laughs> By the way, this reminds me real quick of the uh, the event where the person came back from the dentist. And they were out of it, you know. And so as they pulled up to the house, Ava knows. Ava knows. She's in the back. She knows the story. So they pull up to the house, and one of the kids or somebody runs out and jumps in the car. It's like, go, I've got everything ready for the, you know, the apocalypse, and we've uh -huh. got to go. And they're like, save the cat. Like, the person that's drugged It's like, what's going on? They're like, <laughs> the zombies are coming. And, I mean, they're totally believing everything. And they're like, we can't forget the cat. <laughs> and they're like, no, no, we got to go. They're like, no, we got to go. I mean, they just break down about this cat that they're oh, leaving for so the sad. zombie apocalypse. <laughs> It is it is better than any of the like actual dentist videos that I've seen in a long time. That is but, actually pretty oh, good. Oh, it's so funny. That was like that came out a couple of years ago. It was so funny. Anyway, 
Yeah. That's when you said, Hey, what would you bring immediately? It was like the cat. We don't the have cat. a cat. <laughs> but that was like in my brain, it was like the cat. We gotta bring a weapon. That's what it was. It was like she's like, You gotta get a weapon. It's like I've got this like a curtain rod or something. <laughs> They're like, That'll work. And I mean they are totally bought into this. I felt so bad for that person, but it was hilarious. So that's really funny. Yeah. Anyway, hey, let us know what your uh, responses to this rapid fire would be. Yeah, so, better right. than our list. Probably. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. All right, we're out.